one of the last things I want to talk about is disulfide bonds, which form between cysteines that happen to come close to one another in a polypeptide or even between two polypeptides. So as you can see from this illustration on the right side, you can have interchain disulfide bonds between two different polypeptides, or disulfide bonds or disulfide bridges, we, we sometimes call them, can form between cysteines within the same polypeptide. They form by oxidation and therefore can be disrupted by reduction using reductants. We will talk about using the reductants to complete the denaturation as a, a method to study proteins later on. So here's our three-dimensional model of a polypeptide showing the tertiary structure, but here including some disulfide bridges. I pointed to one, but there are actually, I see one, two, three, four of them here. The one I'm pointing to is actually linking two bits of random coil in this polypeptide. But as you can see, disulfide bridges will form whenever cysteines in two different regions of the polypeptide get close enough together. The important thing about disulfide bridges is that they stabilize three-dimensional structure. They don't facilitate it. There's no attraction between SH groups, the sulfhydryl groups of unoxidized cysteines. But if they come close together as a result of all those other weak interactions, you get this strong covalent bond that then stabilizes the three-dimensional structure.